Let f be a piecewise function defined below. Which of the following statements are true? So which of these six are true? Now, piecewise, you might be a little rusty on. What a piecewise function is, is multiple functions to make one function. All right, if you kind of were thinking of this way, here's kind of a quick, uh, kind of a basic uh, idea here. The first graph here is an upside-down parabola. All right, so I'm, you might not know that, but it's an upside-down parabola, kind of like maybe something like that. That's the first function. But all I want of that function are values left of 1. So all I want are values left of 1. So I'm going to erase everything right of 1. And that would be erase all that. And since it's an open, um, it goes to 1. This is 1 right here. Okay. And then the next graph is 2. So 2, which I don't know exactly, I don't have any increments here, but 2 is just saying, okay, there's 2. So let's call that 2. I don't know how high it was, but that right there would be 2. All right, just a dot. And then the next function is another parabola, which is a happy kind of parabola, um, but it, it, we don't know exactly what it looks like, but I know it's a parabola, and it's maybe looking like this. Okay, but I want, for this one, I want right of 1. So I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to delete right of 1 for this graph. Go to delete right of 1. All right. And I have an open circle again here. And sorry, I deleted all this. So you have to kind of put the axes back in, the graph back in. And that is your graph. It's two parabolas with a dot in the middle because that 1, the answer is 2. And it looks something like that. Now, I did not know what these graphs look like. I do not know exactly what these are. It looks like two parabolas, one's upside down, one right side up, and so forth. So it looks something like that. Don't trust this picture. It's just that's the idea. It is two parabolas, open circles, because you're not including one. One isn't claimed by the function two. Okay, now with all that said, let's not look at this picture, but use the idea of the picture to find the limit of f of x, x approaches 1 from the negative side. So that would be, what are we approaching coming from the negative side? So this red part of the graph. And again, my graph's not accurate. So what are we approaching? Are we approaching 2? Well, to find out we're coming from the negative side of 1, aren't we using this function, this interval? So we use this function. So really, all you're doing for this one is you're using the top function, so 3 minus 1 squared. And that equals... Two. So yes, this one is true because from the negative side, it is approaching 2 according to the function. All righty, let's look at this one, b. The limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the positive side. So from this, I'm looking at the green part. What is it coming from the positive side? So are we looking at this function? This is the function we're looking for for the values bigger than 1. So what we have there is we have now using the function 5, times 1 squared minus 1. So what does that equal? 5 times 1 minus 1 is 4. So does the limit here equal 4? Why, yes, it does. We are correct. So we're approaching 4 from the right side. We're approaching 2 from the left side. So let's look at C here. So does the limit equal 2? No, because from the left side we're approaching 2. From the right side we're approaching 4. Four. They're not the same. So this is not true. It is a does not exist because they approach different from both sides. That's important. Next, what's the limit of f of s as x approaches 0? Okay, x approaches 0 is basically just saying what's f of 0, kind of. Because if we look at this, 0, isn't 0 this function? Isn't it the red? 0 is on, on this one. So aren't we looking at the red function, which is this one, the left side? So to find that, don't we just put in 0? So when we plug in 0 here, isn't it just going to be 3 minus 0 squared, which is 3? Does 0 equal 3? No, it should be approaching 3. Because this is a continuous function. There's nothing going to air out a parabola. So, this is not true. This is not equal to zero. Okay, next. Okay, the limit of f of x um, as x approaches 2, does that equal 98? So, 2, where is 2 at? 2 is on this interval, greater than 1. It's on this green graph, so it's over here. So, I'm going to plug in 2 to this function. 
All right. So what do we get there? That would be um, 5 times 2 squared minus 2. All right. What does that give us? Well, that gives us 5 times 4, because 2 squared is, okay, minus 2. Okay. That gives us, hmm, what do we got here? That gives us, so what, 20 minus 2, which that gives us 18. All righty, so does this equal 8? No, it's 98. It's not the same. It's close, kind of almost, but nope. Um, we have then, this is not true. Another not true. It should equal 18. If that was 18, it would be true. All righty. Next, is f of 2 equal 1? Is the value at 2 1? Well, yes, because x equals 1. Is your value, oh, wait, no. At 1, your answer is 2. At 2, is your answer 1? Oh, be careful there. At 2, no. At 2, the answer was 18. So this is not true because it should equal 18. Now, if I were to ask this, what is f of 1 equal? f of 1 equals 2. That is an interesting statement. This right here is at 1, it equals 2. So f of 1 equals 2, but this is saying f of 2 equals, does, equals 1, which it doesn't. f of 2 equals 18.